but he heals. Heals. hurts, but he heals. Heals. hurts, but he heals. That's what this ministry is all about. Getting the truth, because the truth will make us free. Amen, brother. We want to thank God for his miraculous power. I saved my daughter from not dying yesterday. Amen. Amen. Praise God. We thank God for waking us up. We serve the mighty God. Mighty. Awesome God. Amen. The only one true God. Jesus. The same God that Abraham, Isaac, Amen. and Jacob had. That's who we serve. That's who we, serve, we believe in. Uh -huh. He's a holy God. Holy. And a perfect God. Jesus. And he's an awesome God. Amen. I want to thank you for waking us all up and giving us an opportunity to finally go live broadcasting. So those that are watching by internet or through the website, we thank you for tuning in with us. Amen. We ain't bringing you here for entertainment. Right. You might hear some things today that might shock you, but hopefully that uh, you come up out of your church or out of your falsehood or away from your sin. Right. So that's what this ministry is about. Amen. This ministry is about raw reality. Raw. That's what we're about. Amen. Straight, straight truth. Yes. Everything I say today must be backed by scripture. Uh -huh. So write your scriptures down today. Right. Make sure you have an ear to hear the voice of God speaking to you. Amen. Amen. Right. Amen. You know how this ministry is. It's not no games. It's all seriousness. It's not about church. It's about living right. Amen. It's about serving God. Amen. It's about honoring God, and it's about holiness. Holiness, right? Are you hearing what I'm saying? Holiness, Amen. Brother. brother Sue's gonna be the reader today, and we're gonna get straight to it, because God has called me to call people to come out of false churches. Amen. He's called me to call people to come out of sin, to come out of darkness, Amen. to come into His marvelous light. Amen, brother. If you're here for any other reason, you might as well get up and leave now. Right. But you hear what I'm saying? Amen. We believe the truth will make you free, and that's it. That's it. Amen? Amen. So God wants to deal with some issues in the church. Those right. that are watching, get your mom, get your dad, call your pastor to watch this station. Amen. You hear what I'm saying? Right. Give me 1 Peter chapter 4, verse 17. 1 Peter chapter 4, verse 17, because we are called, and God is dealing with the church now. Amen. He's dealing with the churches. So you must hear him, hear his voice, come out of the false churches, come into righteousness. Amen, brother. 1 Peter chapter 4, verse 17. 1 Peter chapter 4, verse 17. Uh -huh. For the time is come. The time is come, everybody. Go ahead. That judgment must begin at the house of God. God's not judging the people outside of the church. He's Amen. not judging the people in the world. They already judge and condemn because they won't believe the truth. Amen. So he said the time has come that he's judging those who are part of the church. Amen. Those who say that they've been called out of darkness to the Mars light. Those who are saying they hear the voice of God. Those who are acting like they're following God. Jesus. Judgment's coming to all churches. Amen, brother. Ain't that what it says? That's what it says. Go ahead. And if it first begin at us, mm -hmm. what shall the end be of them that obey not the gospel of God? So if judgment's going to come to the churches, woe well, unto those people that ain't even in the right church. Right. Because it's going to be bad for us, it's going to be bad for them. Amen, brother. Give me Titus chapter 1, verse 11. Amen, brother. Because it's something that we got to do then. God's true pastors, true priests, true prophets are going to be speaking the same message, calling people to come out of darkness. Amen, brother. Come out of the false churches. Come away from tradition. Right. If your pastor's not preaching that, he ain't called. Amen. This is what your pastor should be doing. Titus chapter 1, verse 11. Titus chapter 1, verse 11. Mm -hmm. Who mouths must be stopped. So I'm supposed to. Preach to tell the other pastors, shut up. Amen. Their mouths must be what? Stop. They must be what? Stop. Is it scripture or Pastor Roby? Scripture. So I have to be able to expose the evil works of darkness. Give me Ephesians chapter 5. Amen, Ephesians brother. chapter 5. Amen. We'll start at verse 10 and give me the, and give me verse 11. Amen, if your brother. pastor doesn't preach with fire, doesn't pa preach for God, he's not preaching right. Amen, brother. If he's not exposing the falsehood that's destroying our people, if he's not exposing the deception that's in our families, Amen. he's not called. Amen. Ephesians chapter 5, verse 10, 11, and 12. Ephesians chapter 5, verse 10 through 12. Mm -hmm. Prove what is acceptable unto the Lord. This is what we got to start doing. You say you're following God, prove what's acceptable unto the Lord. Amen. Demonstrate what's acceptable. Amen. By your speech, by your act, by your talk, everything you're doing. If he called us in holy, holiness, prove it that you're believing in holiness. Amen. Are you hearing what I'm saying? Amen. We got to demonstrate what's acceptable. Amen. Go ahead, keep reading. Verse 11. And have no fellowship with the unfruitful works of darkness. No, keep going to other churches that don't teach the truth. And have no fellowship with the unfruitful works of darkness. Keep hanging around with those who do drugs and practice sorcery by, by doing drugs. And have no fellowship with the unfruitful works of darkness. Hang around with Freemasons. Have no fellowship. Talk to Eastern stars. Have no fellowship. Are you hearing what I'm saying? Amen. Are you hearing what the word's saying? Amen. Have no fellowship with them. So we got to speak against it. Amen. Keep reading. But rather reprove them. Do what? Reprove Tell them. Tell them what we don't like about them. Reprove them. Are you hearing what I'm saying? Amen. This is what God is telling us to do. So any church that don't believe in holiness, 
We got to reprove them. Got to reprove them. Holiness is what God called us to. Called us to. Right? One Peter chapter one verse uh, fifteen. One and sixteen. One Peter chapter one verse fifteen and sixteen. Mm -hmm. But as he which have called you is holy, mm -hmm. so be ye holy in all manner of conversation. Be holy only in the way that you dress. In all manner of conversation. In all your lifestyle, everything you do, only be holy in the way you dress. In all manner of conversation. That means the way you talk, the way you act, the way you think, the way you believe. Holiness. Amen. God calls you into holiness. Amen. Separation. Amen. Sanctification. Amen. Purification. Amen. And the other nation. Amen. A holy nation. Holy. Matter of fact, give me scripture back there so you don't think I'm just trying to round up here. Amen. One Peter chapter two verse nine. One Peter chapter two verse nine. But you are a chosen generation. You are a what? Chosen generation. God chose you. Amen. You are a chosen generation. Amen. Go ahead. A royal priesthood. We're kings and queens. Amen. Royalty. You got to believe that. Amen. Go ahead. A holy nation. A what nation? Holy nation. A Christian nation. Holy nation. Buddhist nation. Holy nation. Holy nation. Holy nation. Amen. So you're called to be holy. Holy. Called to be holy. holy. The problem is we got some churches that are claiming that they're holy. Amen. But they're not holy because you got to have a holy doctrine. Yes. You got to have a holy belief. Right. A holy attitude. Right. Are you hearing what I'm saying? Amen. Amen. Everybody say holiness. Holiness. It's got to be holiness. It's got to be holiness, brother. So much so, God knew that people was going to be claiming holy but not living holy. Right. So he gave us Ephesians chapter 4, verse 24. Amen, Ephesians brother. chapter 4, verse 24. Ephesians chapter 4, verse 24. And that you put on the new man. Put on the what man? New man. Be the same way. New man. Just change some things about yourself. New man. A whole new man. You got to put on a whole new man. No more excuses. This ministry preaches to all the true seekers, not the excuse seekers. Amen, brother. We don't make excuses. No. Put on a whole new man. Which after God. Which after God. Is created in righteousness. Is created in what? Righteousness. Go ahead. And true holiness. Only holiness. True holiness. Only holiness. True holiness. You hearing this? Amen. True holiness. True. Amen. True holiness. Amen, brother. 2 Corinthians chapter 7, verse 1. Amen, brother. 2 Corinthians chapter 7, verse 1. Look at your neighbor and say, Be holy. Be, be holy. holy. Look at someone else say, Be holy. Be, be holy. 2 Corinthians chapter 7, verse 1. Uh huh. Having therefore these promises, dearly beloved, uh -huh. let us cleanse ourselves. From all filthiness of the flesh and spirit. Cleanse ourselves from all filthy, filthiness of the flesh. Amen. Get away from everything that is nasty to your flesh. Mm. Unclean to your flesh. Amen. Isn't that what it's saying? That's what it's saying, bro. If you're going to be holy, then that's what you got to do. That's what you got to do. He didn't say try. He nope. said try holiness. Nope. He said be holy. Be holy. Right? Amen. Get read, brother. Perfecting holiness. Doing what? Perfecting holiness. Trying, trying holiness. Perfecting holiness. In the fear of God. In what? In the fear of God. Listen, without holiness, you ain't getting in. That's what they say, brother. Amen. You got to perfect it. Perfect. That has to be your mindset. You have to perfect it. Can't go around claiming it. You got to perfect it. Amen. Are you hearing what I'm saying? Amen. Amen. I don't think everyone here hears what I'm saying. I hear what you're Amen. saying, brother. Hebrews chapter 12, verse 14. Hebrews chapter 12, verse 14. Follow peace with all men. And Follow peace with all men. And right. holiness. And what? Holiness. Just believe. Holiness. Look at your name and say, be holy. Be, be holy. holy. Follow holiness? Go ahead. Without which, no man shall see the Lord. So without holiness, you won't see the Lord. Amen. Come to church, you ain't going to see it. Right. Just say you believe, you ain't going to see it. Nope. Without holiness, you will not see the Lord. Don't see the Lord. Are you hearing what I'm saying? Amen. Amen. So this ministry is only calling you to holiness. I'm not calling you to come to eat with me. I'm not calling you for anything else but for you to be holy. Amen, I'm not brother. calling you to follow me. Right. You can follow me as I follow Christ. Right. But I'm calling you to the Holy One God. Holy God. God is calling you to Amen. holiness. Amen. That's it. That's it. Not a better life. Right. To holiness. Holiness. Amen. Amen, brother. So we're going to talk about some things because the church is going to be judged. The preachers are going to be preaching something they're going to be judged about if they don't change it soon. Amen. You hear what I'm saying? Amen, brother. They better stop it before they get judged. Amen. Are you hearing what I'm saying? Amen. Before I move on, those that are watching my internet, those people that I have people come here saying that their parents or friends say that I'm a cult leader, that I walk, that I um, I, um, you are being brainwashed. Look at someone else say, "Yeah, we're brain, brain, brainwashed." Yeah, yeah we're brainwashed. brainwashed. The Bible tells me to brainwash you. Amen. You want a scripture to prove it? Yeah. Ephesians. Ephesians. Chapter 5. Amen, brother. I believe it's verse 26. Ephesians chapter 5, verse 26. So those that are saying that I'm brainwashing you, I'm saying I'm brainwashing you. Amen. Yes, I am. Amen. 
Ephesians chapter 5, verse 26, I believe it is. Ephesians chapter 5, verse 26. Uh -huh. That he might sanctify and cleanse it mm -hmm. with the washing of water by the word. Washing of water by what? The word. I'm cleansing your mind. Amen. I'm cleansing your mind. The Amen. Bible says you got to renew mind. Renew mind. The only way you can do it is get it washed by the word. Amen. So you're being brainwashed. Yes. Are you hearing what I'm saying? That's Amen. my duty to brainwash you. Amen. Tell them I'm brainwashing them. Right. With the word of God. Yes. The only way that can get clean. The right. only way that they can get pure right. is through the word of God. Only way, also right. tell them, I'm trapping your minds. Yes, yes I am. I'm trapping mm -hmm. your mind today. Mm -hmm. 2 Corinthians chapter 10, verse 5. I'm going to tell you why I'm doing it. Amen, it's all scripture. Amen. So I captivate minds. I, I brainwash people. Amen. Yes, those on the internet, you're hearing me clearly. That's what I do. That's my duty. Right. The brainwashing. Amen. With the word of God. Amen. Then to take your mind. Amen. 2 Corinthians chapter 10, verse 5. 2 Corinthians chapter 10, verse 5. Mm -hmm. Casting down imagination mm -hmm. and every high thing that exalted itself against the knowledge of God. I got to cast down everything that you believe in your mind. Amen. All imaginations. Amen. And any high thing, all them college degrees, all that knowledge you think you know, I got to cast it down. Cast it down, brother. All imaginations and every high thing that exalts us over the knowledge of God. Amen. Anything that you believe, I got to cast it down. Amen. That's why you're here. You've been Amen. having problems because you have all this other knowledge that has nothing to do with God. Cast it out. Amen. Cast out all imaginations, every high thing that exalts itself over the knowledge of God and bring it to captivity. Is Amen. that what it says? Bring it into captivity every, every thought. thought to the obedience to Christ. To the obedience to who? Christ. Are you hearing this? Amen. Amen. You got to obey God. Amen, brother. If you're a person living on this earth today, you got to obey God. Got to obey God. Somebody got to captivate your mind to bring you to the obedience to God. Amen, not brother. the obedience to me, not the obedience to the church. Right. Obedience to God. God. The man who says that he's following Christ, name the name of Christ, got to depart from iniquity. Amen, according brother. to 2 Timothy chapter 2, verse 19. Amen, 2 Timothy chapter 2, verse 19. If you're going to name the name of Christ, depart from iniquity. Amen, brother. Are you hearing what I'm saying? Yeah. So all you churches, beware. All you pastors that are listening, depart from iniquity. Amen. Judgment's coming. So let's deal with some of these Pentecostal churches, brother Sue. Right. Let's deal with them. Let's deal with some of these Pentecostal churches. Amen. You speaking in tongues, talking about holy laughter? Mm. If anyone ever tells you that they're running around in church laughing and saying it's the Holy Ghost, that's not scriptural. Not at all. You're acting like you're spiritual, you call it holy laughter, and now they're saying that they're barking now. Mm. You go to these Pentecostal churches, they're barking in the spirit, they call it. Mm. The Holy Spirit don't bark like no dog. No, it doesn't. That's, that's almost blasphemy. That's blasphemy. The Spirit will not. So you see these churches flipping and flopping and shaking, saying it's the Holy Ghost? Right. The Holy Ghost don't act unseemly. No. The Holy Ghost don't make you shiver like a, like, you're, like, like a demon's in you. Right. Are you hearing what I'm saying? Amen, brother. Right. We gotta get away from that foolishness. It's Amen. gotta be order. Right. You hear what I'm saying? Amen. Look at somebody say, stop it. Stop it. Look at somebody else say, gotta get it right, buddy. Gotta get it right, buddy. Because we got to get it right. Gotta get it right. Are you hearing what I'm saying? Amen. So when you see it, if your church is teaching that there's such thing as holy laughter, that the spirit pours out, and you begin to laugh uncontrollably, shake uncontrollably, mm. that's not a scripture. That's not no scripture. That's not holiness. No. That's not the Holy Spirit. No. If your church and your pastor, Tells you to come to a class and teach you how to speak in tongues. Right. You're up there praising and getting your ears and da, 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 in your ear and trying to teach you. Right. That lets you know your pastor is false. False. I have people that call me in there and say, yeah, my pastor and them was trying to teach me how to speak in tongues. Mm. If your pastor trying to teach you how to speak in tongues, that means he never spoke in tongues by the Spirit of God. Amen. Because the Spirit will cause you the Spirit, brother. to speak in tongues. The Spirit. Acts chapter 2, verse 4. Amen. It doesn't say you got to learn how to speak in tongues. Right. It doesn't say to mimic somebody else's tongues. Amen. Those who got to mimic the tongues right. and think the tongues right. is because they never received the Spirit. The Spirit, brother. Acts chapter 2, verse 4. Acts chapter 2, verse 4. And they were all filled with the Holy Ghost uh -huh. and began to speak with other tongues uh -huh. as the Spirit gave them utterance. As the pastor taught me how to do it. As the Spirit gave them utterance. The Spirit is the one that will give you the evidence. Amen. Are you hearing what I'm saying? Amen, Amen. brother. Don't seek tongues. Seek the Holy Ghost. The Holy Ghost. Because the people know tongues got to be supernatural. They all try to say they believe in it so they can begin to fake it. Right. These are Pentecostal churches. Right. If your church practices being slain in the Spirit, anyone mm. ever hear that before? Yeah. If somebody has slain in the Spirit, lay a hand on you and you fall out. Right. You see the offering of the one dude's name is goes around. He goes like this and the whole crowd falls out. Mm. And they fall dead. Mm. That ain't the Holy Spirit. That ain't the Holy Spirit. Mm. All these Pentecostal churches are practicing being slain in the spirit. There's not one scripture showing anyone being slain in the spirit. Not one. Jesus Christ said the spirit gives you life. It doesn't cause you to die. It gives you life. life. Give me John chapter 6. Amen. I believe it's verse 63. Amen, brother. Amen. John, you, ain't, you ain't dying in the spirit. Amen. Someone lay a hand on you fall out. 
Where's that at in scripture? I don't know. Falling out dead. And then how do they know when to get up? Right. You dead, brother. How do you know when to get up? Right. There's nowhere in scripture that shows anyone being slain in the spirits. Nope. And Pentecostal churches teach that. Mm. If it ain't in scripture, something's going on in these churches. Amen. Are you hearing what I'm saying? Amen. Amen. Going around speaking in tongues, saying you say this because you spoke in tongues and you living like hell. Right. You dead. You dead. That's probably why you have a revival every three months. Mm. All these churches have revivals every three months. They have revivals to revive their pockets, mm. to get money. Right. How do you need a revival every three months? Right. To be revived means you must be dead. Right. Are you hearing what I'm saying? Right. Yeah. So if a church got a revival every three months, mm. or the same time every year, all they're doing is telling you that their church is dead. Mm. What they need revival for? Right. Same time every year. Right. Three times a year. Right. Are you hearing what I'm saying? Amen. And in those revivals, they're practicing being slain in the spirit. Mm. Does that make sense? No. no. I'm preaching you to raise up, live through the Holy Ghost, but we're slain. Right. Everybody say foolishness. Foolishness, foolishness yes. brother. John chapter 6, I believe it's verse 63. John chapter 6, verse 63. Uh-huh. It is the spirit that quickened. It's the spirit that what? Quickened. Quickened it. Bring it alive. Amen. The spirit brings alive. It don't cause you to die. Amen. Maybe to yourself. Right. So if your church is practicing, they got people behind you ready to catch you. Mm. If you got so much faith in God, you don't have to catch them. Right. Let them fall. Right. All you who faked the tongue and fell at your church. Grandma who did it, you fell. Grandma, you're a liar. You're a liar. You're a thief. thief. You're a dog. Right. You ain't grandma no more to me. Mm -hmm. You're the devil. Right. Because all you're doing is slaying people in the spirit. Amen, brother. Are you hearing what I'm saying? Amen. Amen. If you're a part of a church that got to try to tell you you're saved, mm. convince you, no, I think you're saved. Right. You're saved. Don't let anyone else tell you you're right. saved. If they're trying to tell you that you're saved, right. then something's wrong. Something's wrong. You got to know that you're you saved. You got to know. Romans chapter 8, verse 16. Amen, brother. Well, I think I spoke in tongues. I think I'm saved. I think I can quote the Holy Ghost. I think, I think, I think. If you're thinking about it, think long, think wrong. Right. That's the word. There ain't nothing to think about. No. Either the power is in you or it's not in you. Right. If you're not sure, wait till you're sure. Right. Are you hearing what I'm saying? Amen. Amen. The scripture tells us about how you'll know. Romans chapter 8, verse 16. Romans chapter 8, verse 16. Mm -hmm. The spirit itself bear witness with our spirit that we are the children of God. Did you hear that? Amen. The spirit itself bears witness with you. Yeah. That you're saved. Amen. You don't need pastor to tell you're saved. Right. You need someone else to tell you you're saved. Right. Oh, you're saved, you're saved, you're saved, you're saved. Why you keep coming up for prayer every week? We are, you're already saved. Right. Well, someone who keeps coming up and it's not for sure to say can't be saved. It can't be saved. The Spirit will tell them that they're yes. saved Amen. according to the Scriptures. That's what it say, brother. They want you to believe you're saved so you can keep coming there and bringing your money. Right. But you hear what I'm saying? Amen. Amen. Get out of the church and they're preaching prosperity doctrine. Right. All they're preaching about is prosperity. God's got a blessing for you, your name's on it, and all these other things. These are just false prophets right. prophesying while they're picking your pocket. That's what it say. That's all they're talking about is money. Give me 1 Timothy. I believe it's chapter 5. I think it's verse 5. Amen. 1 Timothy chapter 5, verse 5. It starts talking about false teachers. It really starts at verse 3, but if you get down to verse 5, it starts talking about false teachers. All they are is talking about money. Getting money. All you do give us this, you're going to get blessed. Amen. What's the pastor's name up in Columbus? Alright, Vernon. No, not Ari right, Vernon. Anyways, the word church up there, not the word church, but anyways, he's a pastor who put on his internet that he needs $50,000 from his uh, from his church. Right. $50,000 and he got a, a, a Rod Carson. Right. Sitting there prophesying, saying if you just give $8,000, the God will give you $8,000, this and that, and this and that. Falsehood. False. Telling you you put this amount of money in the pot and you're going to get this amount of money back. Preaching prosperity and it's all about money, but the Bible talks contrary to that. 1 Timothy chapter, what did I say, chapter 6? 1 Timothy chapter 5, verse 5. Mm -hmm. Now she that is a widow indeed and desolate. 1 Timothy chapter 6, verse 5. 1 Timothy chapter 6, verse 5. Uh -huh. Perverse disputing of men of corrupt mind uh -huh. and destitute of the truth. Uh -huh. Supposing that gain is godliness. They suppose that gain is godliness. Right. In other words, if you got a jet, if you got a car, if you get blessed financially by God, that that means you're holy. Right. That means you're saved. Right. Are you hearing what I'm saying? Right. They're preaching about that. That uh, uh, if you ain't getting blessed financially, obviously you're doing something wrong. Right. That it's only about money. Are you hearing what I'm saying? Amen. Amen. If your church got an ATM, I shouldn't even have to preach about that. Mm. Churches got ATMs in their in their buildings now. Wow. They got ATM machines in the building. That should be a giveaway right there. Right. ATM machines in the building. Are you right. hearing what I'm saying? Amen. This is true. 
Look at your neighbor and say, stop it. Stop it. They got to stop this foolishness. God is a God of order. 1 Corinthians chapter 14. Amen. Brother. I believe it's verse 40. Amen. If your church ain't in order, if it ain't aligned with scripture, it's a synagogue of Satan. I don't right. care how nice they are or how nice they appear. They ain't holy. Amen. Are you hearing what I'm saying? Amen. Amen. 1 Corinthians chapter 14, verse 4. Uh -huh. Let all things be done decently and in order. Let things be done decently and in order. In order, brother. There should be order in the churches. Amen. Decently and in order. In order. Not everybody running around the church doing cartwheels. Right. Profane in the house of God. You, do, you can get on the internet now. Michael Jackson died. Half the churches in the nation was giving him a tribute to him. Mm. Playing his music inside the church. Mm. Here Michael Jackson grew up as a Jehovah Witness. A lot of people don't know that. Mm. Prince grew up as a Jehovah Witness. Right. Don't know that. And you playing their music and they'll tell you that they got their music from the devil. Mm. Or from the dead. Right. And we're over there playing music. Sure. Christian rock music. Right. Rock music we know comes from Satan. Right. Christian hip hop. There's no such thing. No such thing. Hip hop ain't holy, right. but we're playing those musics. Miming. Your church got miming, painting your face, and doing miming. Check the history on it. Right. It was serving the false god Dionysus, which is also in our Bible. Right. It was entertainment. Mm. A lot of it was actually entertaining without speaking of words, but imitating sexual actions. Right. To where people uh, uh, shunned it back then in those days. Right. Now all of a sudden we do it in our church. Mm. Painting their faces, being actors. Right. And we call that holy worship unto God. Mm. God's not standing for it. No, he's not. So, so you got to get it right. You got to get, get it right. right. All these churches is doing this. Honoring Freemasons in your church. Right. You can't be a Freemason and be a Christian at the same time. Not at all. Not There's at no all. way. And when not I say all. Christian, what I'm saying is truly following God. Amen. Amen. Amen you cannot be a Freemason. Amen. Went to a Baptist church a couple years ago. Our pastor honored the Freemasons in there. Come right. to find out, deacons on the boards are Freemasons. Mm -mm -mm. They believe in another God. You right. cannot do that. Cannot do that. Let's go to Matthew real quick. I got it. Matthew chapter 5? Yep. Go ahead. Matthew chapter 5, verse 33. Again you have heard that it hath been said by them of old time, Thou shalt not forswear thyself, mm -hmm. but thou shalt perform unto the Lord thy oath. Uh -huh. But I say unto you, swear not at all. Neither by heaven, for it is God's throne. Swear not at all. Right. Don't say, oh, I swear. Don't say that. You're going to find out that anything more anything more than just yes and no and having your word is evil. I'm going to show it to you here in a minute. But when Freemasons come in too, and they, and they come into the first three levels and they got to join in. Right. They put a, 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 a mask over their head or whatever over their head, put a rope around their neck, right. and they got to take an oath that they won't tell the secrets of the lodge. Mm. If they do, that their tongue will be cut out or their heart will be cut out. Mm. Are you hearing what I'm saying? Right. They go through these rituals and it makes them swear and promise all these other things. The same thing with the Greek fraternities like we learned last week. Mm. All these other things, Christ said, don't let it be happy. But I say to you, swear not at all. Neither by heaven or it is God's throne. Amen. Keep reading. Verse 35. Mm -hmm. Know by the earth, mm -hmm. for it is his footstool. Uh -huh. Neither by Jerusalem, for it is the city of the great king. Uh -huh. Verse 36. Neither shall thou swear by thy head, because thou cannot make one hair white or black. That's saying don't swear on yourself. But right. I swear to God in my life. Right. You don't get that power to do that. Nope. It's evil when you do that. Evil. Don't say, man, I swear, man, I swear. So don't do that. Does everyone understand that? Amen. If you want to be holy, get that out your mouth. Amen. Are you hearing what I'm saying? Amen. Amen. Look at verse 37. But let your communication be ye, ye, nay, nay. Mm -hmm. For whatsoever is more than these cometh of evil. Did you hear that? Amen. Anything more than that cometh of evil. Evil. Are you hearing what I'm saying? What I'm saying, brother. Why would you pledge allegiance to the flag? Mm. Ain't you pledging? Right. Ain't you swearing? Right. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America, to the republic for which it stands. Mm. For which it stands. Does America stand for this? No. Nope. Nope. But you pledge allegiance to them. Mm. And they teach your kids early in school to mm. say it. Mm. Causing you to break what Jesus just told you. Right. We think it's a good thing. Right. I pledge allegiance to the flag. To the what? To the idol? Right. What can that flag do for you? Nothing. Nothing. But wait. Mm. You pledge allegiance to the flag? Woo! Not no more. Mm -mm -mm. Not no more. No That's more. holiness right there, brother. Right. You just hear what I'm saying? Right. Me and one of the brothers went to a baseball game and they was playing the national anthem. They, they stand and rise. I, hey, if you want to do that, fine. I respect people went to the army and all that, but don't tell me that I gotta stop. Right. I'm not going to court, I don't know if they do this anymore, putting my hand on the Bible. Right. 
Raise your right hand, I swear to tell the truth, nothing but the truth, so help me God. Mm. Well, help the whole court system. Right. Cause we shouldn't even be swearing. Right. Are you hearing what I'm saying? You hear what you're saying, right? You go to court and then they got you in trouble. Right. The judge is in trouble, the lawyer's in trouble, and you're in trouble for raising your hand, swearing on something. Right. But why would you swear in the Bible when the Bible, they don't even read the Bible? They don't even read, brother. Are you hearing what I'm saying? Amen. Amen. Swearing on the Bible. Mm. Are you seeing this? Yes. Can you see how quick deception can get in? Right. You see why God sends people who will bring it to reality and get you out of deception. Amen. Thank Pledge God. of Allegiance. Pledge of Fraternity. Pledge of Freemason. Pledge of Eastern Star. That don't even sound right. Right. Eastern Stars are those who are married to Freemasons. Mm. We got them over there in the Baptist churches. Right. Well, I wish I knew her last name. Mm. Jackie Gordon. Mm. I That's got the call. That's a name. <laughs> you know the name. Everybody see the new thing in Ohio Valley where that new magazine came out saying that the Ohio Valley is now considered Sin City? Have Sin you seen City. that? Yeah. You open up to the third or fourth page, you get the pastor and his wife sitting there with a picture. Mm. That's how bad we are getting away from this. That in Sin City magazine or the Ohio Valley, you get the pastor and his wife picture on the like third or fourth page. Yep. They right in there. They right in there. Right in there. We saw it, brother. They should be offended by it if they don't know that it got in there. Right. But it's in there. Right. Are you hearing what I'm saying? Amen. Amen. Don't pledge your allegiance to nothing else but God. Right. Don't swear on God no more if you're going to be holy. Are right. you hearing what I'm saying? Amen, brother. Amen. Now, let's talk about holiness in this church. We got too many lazy people in these churches. Mm. The Bible never called you to be lazy. Right. Look at somebody say, go to work. Go, go to, to work. work. Somebody say, work it out. Work it out. Are you hearing what I'm saying? Amen. Amen. That's what God called us to do. Right. Go to work. He should be working through us. Amen, brother. You ain't doing nothing. You lazy. You ain't trying to be holy. Mm -hmm. Are right, you hearing what I'm saying? Amen, brother. Amen. Don't be lazy. Give Amen. me Ephesians chapter 4. Amen, brother. Ephesians chapter 4. Everybody there? Amen. Everybody all right? Yeah, all right, brother. Look at somebody say, stop it. Stop it. If you're being lazy, stop it. Stop it. Ephesians stop. chapter 4, verse 12. Ephesians chapter 4, verse 12. Uh-huh. For the perfecting of the saints... For the work of the ministry. For the what? The work of the ministry. God sends pastors, prophets, evangelists, teachers, and, and, and he sends them to equip you. I am to equip you. Your pastor is to equip you. Right. To do some work of the ministry. Work. You got to be working it out. Amen. Work out your own salvation, the Bible actually says. That's what it says, brother. You got to do work. You just want to sit around and only hear me preach We got to read and do nothing about it. Right. You're going to be lazy and you won't fall, fall into judgment. Right. Are you hearing what I'm saying? Amen. Amen. That's why a lot of people fall away from this ministry because we be requiring you to be holy, to do work under God. Mm. Are you hearing what I'm saying? Amen. God. People fall away from the ministry. It's a shame that one of the brothers of this church I've talked to uh, a couple days ago used to be one of the main people in our churches standing for doctrine mm. and got messed all up. Messed all up. You got to come here and get discipled, yeah. get rooted and grounded in what you believe. Right. Or Satan's going to snatch your mind. Right. You're going to go to another church just thinking you're visiting. That church is going to be false. And you're going to start believing believe in falsehood. falsehood. We got a brother who came to this church, testified he got baptized with the Holy Ghost, evidence of speaking in tongues. He goes to another church now and says he doesn't believe that. Right. So I want to ask you, brother watching, what happened to you? What happened? Well, how did you speak in tongues? Mm. Why did you say you spoke in tongues? Right. Why did you say you received the Holy Ghost? Right. Are you hearing what I'm saying? Amen. Amen. He was one of the ones who did our flyers. Right. Same as he spoke against Christmas. He spoke against Easter. Now that he went to that church, visited with his girlfriend or his wife, I should say, all of a sudden, he's keeping Christmas again. Right. He's keeping Easter again. Right. Why? Because he didn't get rooted and grounded. Yeah. Why he didn't stick with the work of the ministry? Right. Why he went to and fro because he wasn't sound in doctrine? Right. Give me Ephesians chapter 4, Ephesians chapter 4, verse 12, 13, and 14. Ephesians chapter 4, verse 12, 13, and 14. Uh -huh. For the perfecting of the saints, uh -huh. for the work of the ministry, right. for the edifying of the body of Christ, mm -hmm. till we all come in the unity of the faith right. and of the knowledge of the Son of God. So I'm to teach you, to equip you. Listen, don't come to this church admitting that you don't know nothing. Get one session, and next thing you know, you're walking around everybody in the church preaching like you know something. Right. You need to get rooted and grounded. Amen. Get rooted and grounded before you start going to other churches. Right. Get rooted and grounded. If you don't, this is going to happen. Verse 14. Verse 14. That we henceforth be no more children, tossed to and fro, and carried about with every wind of doctrine. Tossed to and fro, being carried about by every wind of doctrine. Right. How can the brother believe that you're going to be baptized with the Holy Ghost? Right. 
And later on say, you only got to believe. Wasn't rooted in grounded. Because he wasn't rooted in grounded. Amen. And holiness. Amen. And true holiness. True holiness. Are you hearing what I'm saying? Amen. Amen. Let's talk about holiness in the church, <laughs> amongst us. Amen. Are you hearing what I'm saying? Right. If you're going to be holy in the church, you got to be holy from the inside first. Inside. Right. Women and men, I'm speaking of. Right. You got to dress modestly. Right. Modest. Modest. Apparel. Yes, brother. Are you hearing what I'm saying? Amen. <laughs> Give him a scripture, brother Sue. Amen, brother. Amen. Give him 1 Peter chapter first, 3, verse 3. 3 first. 1 Peter chapter 3, verse 3. Uh-huh. Whose adorning, let it not be that outward adorning of the plaiting of the hair and the wearing of the gold. Hold on. Let it not be the outward adorning which draws attention to you. Right. Let that not be how you're trying to prove that you're holy. Right. Let it not be the plating of the hair. Right. All the fancy hairstyles. Right. Cut my hair. I got red on this side. I got gold on this side. That's right. worldly. Worldly. There ain't nothing holy about that. You're right. trying to keep up with the uh, fashion styles of the world. Amen. Are you hearing what I'm saying? Hear what you're Amen. saying, brother. Be modest in it. Modest. The plating of the hair. Wearing all kind of jewelry. Right. Go to these Baptist churches. They got gold watches, gold rings, gold bracelets, gold teeth, mm. gold hair. Man. Everything go. Everything. And it's all fake. Fake. Are you hearing what I'm saying? Amen. Trying to impress somebody. Mm. I was going to a Baptist church. I almost fell for that foolishness. Mm. Up there buying orange suits and red and pink suits and all kind of other foolishness. Foolish. There ain't nothing holy about that. Nothing. The Bible does say dress modest. Modest. Cover your bodies, women. Yes. Men, don't be coming in here with muscle shirts on trying to flex like you're doing something. Right. Look at somebody say, stop it. Stop, stop it. The scripture says modest. Modest, brother. Now, as we know here, come with the best that you do have. Amen. You don't have to be suited and booted. Nope. Are you hearing what I'm saying? Amen. But know that you're real. Amen. You come here with work boots on and your heart is ready for God, that's what God wants. Amen. But I do want to settle something. That when people say, come as you are, when the Bible says, come as you are, it's not saying, come as you are in that way. You still got to be respectful to God. Right. But give them the best you got. All you got is a torn hoodie, but it's the best you got, wear that. Wait. But if you got something better, dress for God. Amen. Are you hearing what I'm saying? Amen, brother. Modest apparel. Women cover up, no breast showing. Amen. Are you hearing what I'm saying? Right. None of that should be going on. Right. We shouldn't be looking at the shape of your figure or nothing like that because no. it's going to draw attention to you. Right. Then you wonder why everybody's eye docking you. Right. Are you hearing what I'm saying? Amen, Amen. brother. 1 Peter chapter 3, verse 3. A holy woman is not going to worry about the outside. Not it's at all. It's going to be the inside. Amen. They're not going to be bringing attention to themselves. Amen. A holy man ain't going to be trying to bring attention to himself. Not at all. Go ahead, keep reading. 1 Peter chapter 3, verse 4. Mm -hmm. But let it be the hidden man of the heart in that which is not corruptible, even the ornament of a meek and quiet spirit. If you're gonna have a, if you gonna have an ornament, instead of it being a big medallion, right, or big old hoop earrings, right. Are you hearing what I'm saying? Amen. It's gonna be a meek heart and a quiet spirit. Quiet spirit. Are you hearing what I'm saying? Amen. That's holiness. Holiness. Give me 1 Timothy chapter 2. Amen, brother. 1 Timothy chapter 2, verse 9. Amen. Holiness is only going to come by following what the word says. Amen, brother. If it's in the book, we believe it, we do it. Amen. Anything outside the book, you're, not, you're going to fall away. Amen. Or hear what I'm saying? Amen. God requires holiness. Holiness. Amen? Amen. 1 Peter chapter 2, verse 9. 1 Peter chapter 2, verse 9. Mm -hmm. In like manner also, that women adore themselves in modest apparel. Modest. Don't come into church with the new, you have to try to have the newest style. Right. Trying to be sexy. Right. And the thing about sexy is sin. Woo! Did you hear what I said? Right. Did you hear what I said? Hear what you said, brother. Amen. Some people are turned on more by sin than they are holiness. Mm. They would rather the woman be all wearing tight clothes so that they can keep their eyes on everything. Mm. Some people come to church looking for a woman to wear something like right. that. Are you hearing what I'm saying? Amen. Look at your name and say holiness. Holiness. Keep reading, Brother Sue. Modest apparel with shamefacedness uh -huh. and sobriety, not with broad hair or gold or pearls or costly array. Are you just hearing this? Amen, brother. So there is a requirement of holiness in the way you dress. There is Amen. a requirement of holiness, but it's going to come from the within. It's going to have respect about yourself. Amen. Are you hearing what I'm saying? Amen. We need holiness in the church. Holiness. For men and women. Amen. Are you hearing what I'm saying? Amen. Amen. Men, brother. Men, you shouldn't be wearing earrings. Right. Not at Anyone opposed to that, speak up now. Because I'm going to ask you why do you wear it. Right. You ask a man why he's wearing an earring, you're going to say it's a trend. Right. It's a fashion. Right. Are you hearing what I'm saying? Amen. You're going to see the rappers and the stars and all that putting their, it used to be, what was it? You had a guy who could only wear one, one earring in the right. left ear. You wore it in the right ear, you was gay. Right. 
<laughs> right? Right. Ain't that what it used to be? Yeah. Right. According to the world? Right. So they said, oh, hold on, let me just put them in both. Right. right. You understand what I'm saying? They say, bro. Are you double gay? Right. Are you hear what I'm saying? Right. Why wear an earring? Right. Are you hearing what I'm saying? Amen. Don't you know in history tells you back in the day they used to tattoo people and put earrings in their noses and their lips and all that other stuff? Mm. You see that on TV? Right. It was a show that somebody owned you. Woo! What it say? Are you hearing what I'm saying? Yep. Yeah. That's why they was piercing back in. I mm -hmm. own them. They put a mark on them. Right. Maybe you're getting the mark of the beast every time you pierce your nose. Mm. Come on, man. Tongue ring? Mm. A tongue ring. Mm. Satan controls your tongue. Right. You try to let everybody else know, no, 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 no. That's foolishness. Foolishness. Girls want to let you know why they're showing the tongue ring. Mm. Drawing attention to their mouth. Right. Ain't nothing but filth in there. Filth. The food all over it. Mm. Yeah. Man. Hearing what I'm saying. Hearing hey, 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 brother. Holiness. Holiness, brother. Wearing these earrings, brothers, because it's pride. Pride. Makes you look better. Mm. Fake, uh, what's that, Cuban? I don't know how to pronounce it. I never wore fakes at the right. Cuban Siconians or right. whatever. Big old earrings right. out the ear. We know that's a symbol of pride. Right. That's saying I got money. I got money. That's drawing attention to yourself. Mm. You're trying to let everybody else know that you're God. Right. Or by how much your thing is worth, that's your God. Right. Amen, brother. I know the men don't like it. Mm. Genesis chapter 35, verse 2 through 4. Amen, brother. Man trying to look all sexy. Earrings all in her ear. Yes. Take them out. Amen. Take them out. Amen. We brought the young brother, young man up here that used to coach basketball. Showed him this video on it. He broke it down even better than what I did. We had kids up in here crying, taking their earrings out, dropping them out. Mm. Amen. But you're not happy with yourself? You have to pierce yourself to try to make yourself have a better appearance? Right. God made you the way he made you. Yes, he did. Are you hearing what I'm saying? Amen. Amen. Good. Genesis chapter 35, verse 2 through 4. The earrings are your gods. Right. All that jewelry you're wearing is your gods. Right. Let's go. Genesis, Genesis chapter 35, verse 2 through 4. Genesis chapter 35, verse 2 through 4. Uh -huh. Then Jacob said unto his household mm -hmm. and to all that were with him, Put away the strange God. Do what? Put away the strange God. Notice the scripture says, put away the strange gods. Amen. Keep reading. That are among you. Mm -hmm. And be clean. Mm -hmm. And change your garments. Mm -hmm. And let us arise. And God says, change your clothes. Amen. Put away the strange gods. Right. He's going to tell you what it is in verse 4. And let us arise and go up to Bethel, and I will make there an altar to God, mm -hmm. who answered me in the days of my distress, and was with me in the way which I went. Verse 4, and they gave unto Jacob all the strange gods which were in their hand. Okay, he gave to Jacob all the strange gods which was in their hand. Right. What was it? And all of their earrings which mm -hmm. were in their ears. And Jacob hid them under the oak which is called Shechem. Did he say get rid of the strange gods? Yes. Then the scripture said the strange gods was what? The earrings. earrings in their ears. Amen. Amen, brother. That's, Amen. That's true. Is that what it says? What it says. Don't be mad at me. Be mad at all that money you just spent. Right. Mm. Mm -hmm. Are you hearing what I'm saying? Hear what you're saying, brother. Oh. They were strange gods back then. Yep. Exodus chapter 32, so we can prove it some more. Mm -hmm. The Bible says, prove all things. Prove all things. You was watching my internet, laying in the bed with that girl right now, take the earring out. Right. Better kissing on my ear and the earring all around me. Right. Get rid of it. You read up. There's a foolishness. Foolishness. Exodus chapter 32, verse 2 and verse 4. Exodus chapter 32, verse 2 and this verse 4. This is when Aaron, when Moses was going away, they was like, oh, he ain't coming back. Let's make us some gods. Mm. Let's see what happens. Exodus chapter 32, verse 2 through 4. Exodus chapter 32, verse 2 through 4. Uh -huh. And Aaron said unto them, break off the golden earrings which are in the ears of your wives, of your sons, and of your daughters, and bring them unto me. Mm -hmm. And all the people break off the golden earrings which were in their ears and brought them to Aaron. Uh -huh. And he received them at their hand and fashioned it with a graven tool mm -hmm. after he made it a molten calf. Uh -huh. And they said, These by thy gods, O Israel, which brought thee out of the land of Egypt. These is what brought us out of the world. Mm. These are our gods that brought us out. What was he talking about? The earrings. The earrings. 
Scripture or Pastor Rose? Scripture. Oh, it's not a big deal. It's not a big deal. Keep worshiping strange God. Mm. Keep giving strange fire to God. Give me Leviticus chapter 10, verse, verse uh, 1 and 2. Amen. Keep on doing it. This is what was your God. Right. Why is it so hard to get rid of him then? Right. Why is it so hard to get rid of him then? Amen, brother. Amen. Are you hearing what I'm saying? The church has done fell for this. Right. Pastors that are preaching with hoops in their ears. Mm. Are you hearing what I'm saying? Amen, brother. Oh, well, it said that they had him. It said that they buried him. Guess where they got the jewelry from? When they left Egypt. Right. Egypt represents the world. Right. Yeah. Amen. Are you hearing what I'm saying? Amen. Right. Where we at, Brother Sue? Leviticus chapter 10, verse 1 and 2. Uh-huh. And Nadab and a and Abahu, the sons of Aaron, uh -huh. took either of them his censer and put fire therein, mm -hmm. and put incense thereon, and offered strange fire. They offered what? Oath. Strange fire. You gotta quit offering God strange fire. Right. False praises. Right. False everything. Right. So you coming up in here with all your jewelry, all your slickery, and all that other stuff, offering to God strange fire. Strange fire. It's strange to him. Amen. Are you hearing what I'm saying? Amen. It's strange to him. Strange. The way the church is operating today, it's strange to the Holy God. It's strange to the Holy God. How did they fall so, so far away? Right. We didn't see this stuff in the reality. Nope. Are you hearing what I'm saying? Amen. Is there any more to that? Which he commanded them not. He commanded them not to do that. Amen. Put no other gods before me. Right. Are you hearing what I'm saying? Amen. Look at there and say holiness. 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 Good. Any more? And there went out fire from the Lord mm -hmm. and devoured them. And they died before the Lord. We serve the same God as Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. Right. We serve the same God in the Old Testament. Right. The, the point of the matter is this. If he killed them off because of their strange fire, you keep dealing with strange things. Right. You're going to get killed off. Amen. That's One of the brothers said. that left the church told me, oh, all you do is put fear in people. All you do is put fear in people in doubt. Uh -huh. Now, that's a lie. That's a lie. I don't put no doubt. Maybe you putting doubt in them. Right. Because I'm teaching them truth, telling them God's going to strike them down if they don't get right. Right. Now, I might put the fear in them, but that's the whole duty of man. Yes, the whole duty of I man. I preach truth. Amen. The fear of the Lord is the beginning of the wisdom. The beginning of the wisdom. So I give you yes. what God says. Amen. Hopefully, it strikes fear in you. Right. Because if it don't, something's wrong. Something's wrong. Are you hearing what I'm saying? Amen, brother. Amen. Then they turn around and put doubt in you. Some of your parents, some of your friends put doubt in you. From what I teach you, it causes you to fear God. You begin to not work in God, and they think it's strange. Mm -hmm. That's what they think. They think it's strange that you don't run with them no more, one Peter says. Right. But we're all getting away from the strange thing. Woo. We're talking about holiness. Holiness, holiness brother. So look at your neighbor and say, stop it. Stop, stop it. it. So you got to get it right, oh, buddy. Get it right, right, buddy. Give me Jeremiah chapter 4, verse 30. Amen, brother. We're talking about holiness, men and female. We don't need to wear a whole bunch of makeup in here. No. Modest. 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 Be happy with who you are. Yes. You don't need to walk around with weave in your hair. No. Nope. Be happy with the hair that you got. Amen. We don't need no lipstick. Right. We're drawing attention to our lips. Right. And then men fall for the flattery of her lips. That's what Big, fat, said. juicy lips being all red. Mm. We laughing, but it's in the church. It's in the church, brother. It was whores that would go and put the red lipstick on and go outside and start blowing kisses. Straight now you got people getting tattoos of the lips on their neck of their girlfriend. Mm. Are you hearing what I'm saying? Yes, brother. Anybody don't like me? I'm fine with that. Right. Women, you don't need to cake up your face with a whole kind of makeup. No, you don't. Jeremiah chapter 4, verse 30. Jeremiah chapter 4, verse 30. Uh -huh. And when thou art spoiled, what wilt thou do? Mm. Though thou clothest thyself with crimson, uh -huh. thou, though thou deckest with thee with ornaments of gold, mm -hmm. though thou rentest thy face with painting, in vain shall thou make thyself fit. You painted your face in vain. In vain. In other words, put on all this makeup for what? For what? Think about that. Amen. ZZ Top. Mm. All the other rock groups, what they do? Paint their face white. Right. They painted their own face. Right. And went out and performed. Right. Women, you put on a whole kind of makeup, all you're doing is performing for all the men that walk through the mall that you walk past. Right. You want someone else to see you. Right. Well, I don't look good, so I gotta put it on. So now you're fake age yourself. Mm -hmm. That ain't you. Amen. That ain't you with that, that makeup on. No, it's not. You women are beautiful without it. Yes, you are. You didn't come out with makeup on, so you don't need to put makeup on. You, you don't, don't need you to don't. put it on it. You don't need to put it on. God was happy with you when you came out the way you look. You're beautiful. 
Are you hearing what I'm saying? Amen. But the world has taught you that you need makeup. Right. You need eyeshadow. Right. You need to enhance yourself. Right. No, you need the Holy Ghost. Holy Ghost. That'll enhance you. That'll, enhance. That'll be the light that radiates off of you. Yeah, brother. Not something that you put on and then soon you step up, step up in the heat and then go down and smear your face. Mm, Can't kitchen. stand the heat, get out the kitchen. Get out. Are you hearing what I'm saying? Amen. 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 Mm. I'm just telling you what the Bible says. You saying what the Bible says, brother. Proverbs chapter 6. Mm. Proverbs chapter 6. Yeah. Verse 24 and 25. So you men are like women who put all that makeup on. Right. You like fake stuff. Fake stuff. Men tell their women to get fake breasts. Right. You like fake stuff. Fake stuff. Because you fake. You fake. You phony. You, you, phony. Don't, you ain't real. You ain't real. Are you hearing what I'm saying? Amen, brother. Amen. Girl, just put on this eyeshadow. Mm. Let this match that way. Mm. Then you get mad soon some dude uh, takes your girl. Right. Are you hearing what I'm saying? Yeah. You want your little girl to be of the world? Let the world, if she's going out to the world in the fashion of the world, she's eventually going to like the highest man in the world. Right. If that man got more money than you, she should leave you. Yep. This is going to be in the world, get the best. Get the best. Are you hearing what I'm saying? Right. Teaching our kid, I hate it when my daughter talks about she wants to put on lipstick. My kid don't wear lipstick, so I don't even know where she gets it at. Right. I hate it. Hate I hate it. every false way. Hate it. Teaching our children up. Oh, let's just put on glossy lips. Mm. For what? For what? Putting our kids in beauty passions, uh, pageants and stuff. Mm. Preacher, we, these kids ain't born to show off for nobody else. No. Dress them up for God. Right. Dress them up in righteousness. Holiness. Are you hearing what I'm saying? Amen. Amen. Proverbs chapter 6. Proverbs chapter 6, verse 24. And 25. And 25. Uh-huh. To keep thee from the evil woman. Listen, he was telling the people, he was telling the men, follow my instruction. Because I'm going to keep you away from something. Men, follow my instructions. Amen. Go ahead. From the flattery of the tongue of a strange woman. Of a what woman? Strange of woman. Of a what woman? Strange woman. Go ahead. Lust not after her beauty in thy heart. Lust not after her beauty in thy heart. Amen. What is referring to her beauty is coming from the way she dresses sex. Right. The way she puts all the makeup on. Right. If you're going to be a wise man, don't fall for that. Amen. Are you hearing what I'm saying? Amen. Amen. Proverbs chapter 7, verse 10. This is for all those, I don't know if they call them this now, but Daisy Dukes. Right. Butt hanging halfway out. Right. Can't even can't even get in a position or take off running. Right. Can't even flee from fornication. Right. And stuck in a position with the man. Man, come on, man. Are you hearing what I'm that saying? Ain't right, right. That ain't right. Look at somebody say, stop it. Stop, stop it. it. Man get these big old muscle shirts, can't even relax. Right. Wonder why they think a Christian men walk around all stiff. They can't put their arms down. Man. Wearing all these tight clothes, showing off your pecs and all that other stuff. Man. Are you hearing what I'm saying? That ain't man. holding. Going to the beach, oiling down your body. Mm. I'm serious about this. This is what goes on in the churches. In the church. This is say foolishness. Foolishness. If God calls us to holiness, how are we doing all this? Right. Got this new style with females wearing straight spandex. Straight spandex. No, you, are you serious? No, nothing. That's it. Christian won't walk up in the church with straight spandex. <coughs> straight spandex. You hear what I'm saying? That ain't I'm talking about his heart out. Mm. You got on spandex and a turtleneck. Mm. It, shows, <laughs> it shows you confusion. Are you hearing what I'm saying? Amen. Amen, say, keep it real. Keep, keep it, it real. real. Where we at, brother Sue? Proverbs chapter 7, verse 10. Uh huh. And behold, there met him a woman with the attire of a harlot. A tire of a what? Harlot. There met him a woman with the tire of a harlot. So harlot. that means there's got to be some clothing out here that makes you like a whore. Woo! Mm. Scripture, Pastor Roby. Look at somebody say, God is real. God is real. He deals with every situation. He deals with all of them. With everybody's in this world. Mm. But there's a tire of a harlot. Of a harlot. Suck the wall of the heart. Right. She's loud. She's loud. She's stubborn. Stubborn. Her feet are bobbing on in her house. Right. She always got these riding around with her head out the window. Mm. Stay at home. Stay at home. Are you hearing what I'm saying? Right. This is all scripture. Mm -hmm. Verse 21, with her much fair speech, she caused him to yield mm. with the flattering of her lips. Are you seeing this? Right. She forced him. Mm. Verse 25, let not the heart decline in her ways. Go not astray with her. Mm. Brothers, don't leave this church because I teach you don't be with an unbeliever. Right. Don't follow her. You're going to end up at the vineyard church is what's going to happen. Right. Then you're going to be confused. Right. Because she don't believe. Right. Or he don't believe. Right. Are you hearing what I'm saying? Right. Amen. She looks sexy. She dressed sexy. She dressed like a harlot. Let not that heart decline her ways go astray in her past. For she has cast down many of the wounded. Mm. Yeah, many strong men strong have been slain men. by her. Mm. You know what this is talking about? She got you. She, you looked at her lips. You looked at her clothing. She drew you to the house. Mm. She slayed many men. Many she men. slept with many men. Many men. 
Strong men. Strong men. Have it slain by her. Mm. Her house is the way of what? Hell. The house is the way of what? Hell. Going down to the chambers of death. Mm. Are you seeing this? That's what the the Bible says. talks about girls trying to draw men with their sexy attire, uh -huh. with their lips. Uh -huh. And it talks about how men, jelly back men, fall for it. Jelly and go down and fall into her house, right. which is hell. hell. You lay on that bed, you might as well lay in your grave. Mm. Hell. Say holiness. holiness. I'm calling the brothers to holiness. holiness. See, there ain't no brother. excuse. Say, oh, well, she was wearing this. Well, brother, you should have had holy eyes. Yes. Are you hearing what I'm saying? Right. Amen. Well, women, don't, don't turn around and make it happen. Right. Are you hearing what I'm saying? Amen. You're saying, brother. God's calling us to holiness. Holiness, brothers. Are you hearing what I'm saying? Yeah. Man. Holiness. So take off all the makeup. Take it off. You don't have to power that stuff on. No. You Be don't. happy with who you are. Amen. That's brother. the problem with this now. You've been listening to TV and watching TV. They make you think you ain't nothing. No. So you listen to the words of the world instead of listen to the words of God. He yes. said he fearfully and made you wonderfully. Yes. Mom. You should be happy with the way you are. Mm. Are you hearing what I'm Amen, saying? Amen, brother. Yeah. Let's get on some of these pastors then, mm. a little bit. He's all right? Yeah, get him, brother. Look, somebody say, stop it. Stop, stop it. it. We got all these youth pastors. There's nowhere the Bible says a youth pastor. Nowhere. Only one that should be pastoring your kids is the parents. Parents. The parents should be teaching their kids. Parents. Then when they come to of age, they should be having a worship service with the older people. Right. That's what it should be. It There's should nowhere be. in scripture where it says youth pastor. No way. Most of them youth pastors you get, they're still little kids themselves. That's why they want to be youth pastors. Right. They still want to play their video games. Right. They want to tickle your children. Right. That's what they want to do. Yeah. Bring them where everyone else is at so their parents can keep an eye on the children. Mm. We want to separate them so the guy in the back can go ahead and rape them. Mm. Are you hearing what I'm saying? Right. Well, I'm called to be a youth pastor. Show me in scripture where you can be a youth pastor. Right. It doesn't call for that. Nope. It calls for a pastor. Pastor. It calls for a deacon. Yes. Let's talk to these greasy head deacons over in Willie. Mm. Walk around with the Jerry curl. Talk to them. You hearing what I'm saying? Jerry yeah. curl. You ain't no deacon just because you helping out? Right. Are you hearing what I'm saying? Yep. Just deacon because you've been there along with everyone else. Right. Freaky deacon. Mm. Let's go to 1 Timothy. Yes. 1 Timothy. Uh -huh. Let's see the qualifications of a deacon. Wait. Got deacons over in Macedonia. Mm. Come to the faith. Eight months later, they're a deacon. Deacon. Don't know no word. No word. Nothing at all. Now, all they gotta do is dress and drop Jericho juice on the, on the uh, bleachers. Right. Deacons and their wives ain't even following God. Not at all. Are you hearing what I'm saying? Right. So let's look at the deacons. Right. Let's look at the qualification of deacons. Amen. Deacon, if you're watching, look at your qualification. If Amen. you don't fall under that, submit your thing and tell them you don't want to be a deacon no more. Right. 1 Timothy chapter 2, verse 9. No, yes. verse, verse 8. 1 Timothy chapter 2, verse 8. Uh -huh. I will therefore that men pray everywhere, lifting up holy hands without three, ran it out. Chapter 3, verse 8. 1 Timothy chapter 3, verse 8. Likewise, must the deacons be great, not double tongue. Not what? Double tongue. You got deacons out here talking behind their own pastor's back. Right. Not double tongue. Mm. Are you hearing what I'm saying? Amen. 